you. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, so my name is Alicia Pluropoulos, and I'm running for chairman of the Board of Supervisors. <laughs> I'm running because there are two Fairfax counties that are separated by economic opportunity. I've lived those two extremes. I often tell my daughters that they are not growing up the way that I grew up. When I was nine years old, my father was fired from his job as a GED teacher. He was standing up for the rights of the students that he was teaching, and his private employer fired him for that. That set off a chain of events for my family that led to eviction from our house. I spent the better part of my fourth grade year living in a motel room with my siblings, some of whom are back here today. And some <laughs> that experience shaped who I am today. It shaped my entire life and my entire outlook. I am I have spent the last 14 years working in community economic development. I went to Harvard with the help of a lot of financial aid, work study, student loans. I then got a master's in public policy at Princeton from the Woodrow Wilson School of, um, of International Affairs and Public Policy. And I then went to Yale Law School. I am still paying off those loans. <laughs> I am still paying off those loans, but I, I entered into a career in community economic development because I know that this is where I can make an impact and where I can make a difference. So I am a law professor now, I teach at Georgetown Law School, but my head is not in the clouds at all, like many of my colleagues, unfortunately. <laughs> but my heart and my head is in the streets. So I run a small public interest law firm within the law school and we work in community economic development. I represent community development financial institutions making loans to small businesses and nonprofit organizations. I represent nonprofits, I represent small businesses that are started by people like returning citizens or folks that are or women that have, are survivors of domestic violence. I help those organizations grow and scale. They are the economic engines of our society. That is the work I do and that is the skill set that I will bring to the chairman position. I shared my story about my economic hardship because that is what so many of our families in Fairfax County are facing today. Unfortunately, those realities are masked. You know, we can say that we have 6% poverty in Fairfax County, but the truth is we have pockets of poverty that are as high as 14%. 22% of children in Mason districts are living in poverty. One in four Fairfax County children experiences food insecurity. This is unacceptable. And the county has not acted with the urgency that it needs on these issues. I have prior three priorities, affordable and workforce housing. Our, our workers cannot afford to live in Fairfax County. This is not only a values issue and an issue that I care about because of my background, but it's also an economic issue. We need a tax base and our businesses are a wonderful tax base for Fairfax County, but they need a workforce that has an accessible workforce where their, their employees are not driving an hour in traffic every day because they can't afford to live here. I were, uh, I'm a former member of the Fairfax County Budget Committee. We've asked the county for 15,000 units of new affordable housing over the next 10 years, and this was a conservative ask. The county came back with 5,000. Again, completely unacceptable. This tells me that they are kicking the can down the road that they will solve the affordable housing crisis by essentially saying we don't have a crisis because everybody's left the county. <laughs> that is, that we, the, the sense of urgency is not there. In early childhood education, we know that years one to five for a child are the crucial brain development years. 
We have 500, over 500 students waiting on our, public, our uh, wait list for publicly funded preschool. And that is just the, the kids that are on the wait list, not counting all of the others that actually have a need but are not on the wait list. We need early childhood education slots, and many more of them. And finally, in terms of economic growth, it is fantastic that we are um, bringing other com companies, Fortune 500 companies, to Fairfax County or to Northern Virginia. But we also need to be growing our own small businesses. We need to be innovating in that area, making sure that we can bring businesses to the table that can, that, that can innovate and, and grow our tax base here. These are the things that I want to prioritize. There are so many other things that are crucial and critical to um, Fairfax County's growth. We need to address climate change. Every municipality, you know, every fe from the federal down to the, to the local level, we need to address climate change. It is something that is a threat to our very existence. Unfortunately, the county has a vision plan, but has no action. Again, the sense of urgency is not there. So this is my vision. Um, these are the things that I bring to the table. I think that at this point, Fairfax County has a choice. We are at a crossroads. We can either stick with the status quo and make these incremental steps and see where we end up, or we can become a leader in this area, a leader in the region on affordable housing, early childhood education, and economic growth that addresses climate change. This is my vision, and I invite you to join my campaign and to join me in this mission. Alone, and I am so thrilled to see all of your wonderful faces out there to, out here today uh, in the snow. <laughs> and I'm really glad I got you guys in here. You might not be able to leave, <laughs> but at least you're here. But I invite you to join my campaign, and I invite you to you know sign up to volunteer. Um, you know, our push right now obviously is fundraising. I entered this campaign two weeks ago, and we've been just. You know, Zakia has been a, a fantastic just getting us on the ground um, and, and just hitting the ground running. But we need your support today. So thank you, and I look forward to speaking with all of you as we uh, continue today for today.